Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about tibial spine fracture imaging. Epidemiology incident 2 to 5% of knee injury with effusion in the pediatric population. Most common in age 8 to 14 years old. Symptom presentation with severe swelling and pain in the knee, instability to bear wedge. Inspection is immediate knee infusion due to hematrosis, knee usually in flexion portion, assess for range of movement, often limits secondary to pain. One pain is control, lack of motion may indicate. Posterior anterior trauma. Etiology. Traumatic mechanism, rapid deceleration or hyper extension, rotation of the knee as in sport. Same mechanism but the, that would cause ACL tear in adult. Fall from bike or motorbike. Associated condition occur in 40% of eminent fracture. Meniscal injury, collateral ligament injury, capsular damage, also control fracture. Anatomy. Ostology, severe imminent. Non articular portion of tibia between major and lateral tibia plateau consists of two spines, ACL attachment to major spine. ACL insertion is nine millimeter posterior to the intermeniscal ligament and adjacent to the anterior horn of the meniscus. PECL does then attach to tibial spine. Pediatric specificity. Intercondyl imminent in incompletely ossified and is more prone to failure than ligament structure. Failure occurs through deep cancellous bone. Fracture usually confined to intercondyl imminent, but it may Propagate to tibial plateau major is most common. Ligament, anterior cruciate ligament, insert 10 to 14 millimeter behind anterior border of tibia and extend to major and lateral tibial imminent. This is, uh, this is the schema of the, the green and UCA MOI based system for tibial spine fracture classification. So grade one is none or minimal displaced fracture. I mean, displacement is less than two millimeter. Grade two is pottery hing fracture. Displacement is more than two millimeter of the entry aspect of the fracture and less than two millimeter of the posterior aspect of the fragment. In grade three, meet any the following criteria. Displaced fracture, more than two millimeter of the posterior aspect of the fragment. Fracture that result in miniscal or intra-miniscal ligament in Draman. fragment is standing in a 2D particular surface of the medial or lateral tibial plateau with more than 2 millimeter displacement. According to the classification by Meyer and 
Kiva. So the GBS file fracture divided into four types. Type one is non-displaced fracture of GBS spine. The AVASH fragment is not displaced from the fracture crater. Type two is partial displaced fracture. Entire part of the AVASH AVASH fragment is displaced superiorly. Type 3A, complete displaced fracture involve only ACL insertion. Type 3B, complete displaced fracture involve entire tibial eminence. Type 4 is commuted fracture of tibial spine. This is an example of the imaging according to the, the type of the Tibial spine fracture. So the type one, we can see the MI image indicated by Y solid arrow. And type two, we can see on the AP and lateral knee X ray. So minimal displacement. And type 3, also we can see the imminent fracture indicated by the black solid arrow. And this same, so the modified major and, major and cable classification of the imminent fracture. So A is type 1, non displaced, B is type 2, displaced anterior margin with an intact posterior contact acting as the hing. C is type 3, completely displaced and void of all bone contacts. Type 4 is commuted fracture of the imminent. Imaging diagnosis. A radiograph. A recommend view is AP and lateral. Most useful in lateral view, most useful for determining fracture displacement. Intercondylar. Oblique. Helpful in determining the extent of the tibia plateau involvement. This is an example of the Tibial eminent fracture, or we call tibial spine fracture. We can clearly see in the lateral radiograph. Detected with the fragment in the joint space. Another example of the tibial spine fracture. So the radiograph so the loosened line fracture at the major eminent of the tibia. Another example this is an evasion fracture, red and white arrow indicated of the intercondylar eminent. This is a so large supra patella hematosis yellow arrow indicating such fracture are associated with injury to the anterior cruciate ligament. CT useful for pre-operative planning used when fracture displacement cannot be determined by planned radiograph. So this is an example of the large CP spine evasion clearly demonstrated on the CT and there is a separate incidental fibrous cortical defect at the proximal portion of the
close to the meta prices, a portion of the uh, proximal tibia. How more iron? Better at determining associated ligamentous meniscal damage than CT or radiograph. Maturity of fracture so no additional internal derangement meniscus injury. 15 to 37 percent of cases have associated intraarticular pathology. So this is an example of a non-displaced tibial imminent fracture in mean Taiwan. Arrowhead indicated in an adult on a coronal fat suppress T2 wedge image. Other injury include a second fracture. Arrow indicate osteochondral injury of the lateral femoral condyle. Asterisk indicate and vertical longitudinal tear of the major meniscus not soon here. This is another example of the knee of a 10 years old boy with tie to fracture demonstrate elevation of the aval tibial imminent anteriorly arrowhead indicated there is entrapment of a portion of pop up fat pad asterisk indicated underneath the fragment. This is another approximate, uh, proximal uh, displaced and rotated tibial imminent fracture, type 3. Arrowhead indicate in an adult on a fat suppressed proton density based sagittal view. The transfer meniscal ligament arrow is uh, indicated is at the anterior margin of the fragment but is not entrapped. The ACL fiber are intact. This is a commuted displaced tibial eminent fracture consistent with a type 4 injury in a adult soon on a coronal T2 wedge image. The fragment, as we indicated, are elevated and are no longer in contact with the underlying bone. Note the anterior root of the lateral meniscus inserts onto one of the fragment. Arrow had indicated, which could make fracture reduction more difficult. Concomitant injury include a major collateral ligament sprain. Arrow indicated. Another example of a T1 which such type image from other patients so a light commuted severe eminent fracture with posterior extension. The tibia attachment size of the anterior cruciate alignment arrowhead, the posterior cruciate alignment asterisk indicated, the posterior root of both menisci not soon and the anterior root of the lateral menisca not soon are involved. Thank you. So, so when we see the when we find the pathology of the fracture at the eminent of the tibia, so the treatment is there are two methods for treatment of this fracture. So first one is non-operative. We can do close reduction, aspiration, hematol, 
immobilize in full extension. In case of non-displaced type 1 and a reductible type 2 fracture. So we can do immobilize cast in extension for 3 to 4 weeks. Patient can get extremely stiff and prolong immobilization allow for gradual rehab program. In case for operative OIF versus all arthroscopic fixation, in case of type 3 or type 2 fracture that cannot be reduced, type 2 fracture may be failed to reduce due to the entrap, major meniscus entrap in the meniscal ligament or the pull of the lateral meniscus attachment block to a standstill. Summary. A tibial imminent fracture, also known as tibial spine fracture, is an intra-articular fracture of the bony attachment of the ACL on the tibial that is most commonly seen in children from age 8 to 14 years old during athletic activity. Diagnosis can be confirmed with radiograph. Obtaining MRI study can be helpful for determining associated ligamentous meniscal damage. Treatment is close reduction and casting or open reduction and fixation depending on the degree of displacement and success of the close reduction. So thank you.